All right, uh, thank you very much. And uh, I think we had a good afternoon just now. A very inspiring and uh, speech by Prof. Tari Ramadan. Um, I think it's very important for us uh, and to many uh, Muslims and non-Muslims who are here, probably it would be the first time that you've heard that, you know, that Islam is compatible with democracy and human rights. And there's nothing to say that these two things are alien to Islam at all, right? Uh, the most important thing that I want to say is that, uh, as Professor Tarek Madan mentioned just now, uh, for example, democracy itself. Uh, I would like to quote what uh, Rashid Kanushi had mentioned uh, in one of his writings. Uh, he quoted uh, an, an intellectual uh, by the name of Malik bin Nabi. He's a very well-known uh, intellectual, Muslim intellectual, and he said that when the tree of Shura wilted in the land of the Muslims, its seeds grew during the during Renaissance in the land of Europe as democracy. So probably like Professor Taranwala mentioned, Wa amruhum shura bainahum, the basis is there. Um, the mutual consultation among Muslims that they should discuss, and that is the basis of, of democracy. And we're living in a country that says Malaysia is probably, uh, has the best democracy in the world. <laughs> right? We have heard that, right? Many, many times. Malaysia has the best democracy in the world. And yet, where do we stand? If you look at the latest democracy index, latest democracy index, if I'm not mistaken, it was in 2011, a latest democracy index that divided all the countries in the world into four categories, either true democracy, partial democracy, flawed democracy, and authoritarian regime, Malaysia was in the third category as flawed democracy. There's nothing much to be proud of, being the best democracy in the world. So, and, and, and as, same as, as human rights itself. You know, the reason why we, we think that we are a democratic country is that because we have uh, an election every four or five years. And yet, as a steering committee member of Bursay, I can assure you that there's nothing to be proud of that election, right? It's, it's uh, basically, uh, you know, it's being abused. There's no um, uh, uh, freedom of uh, press. There's no um, clear delineation uh, process. There's, uh, uh, the electoral role is uh, filled with uh, innuendos and, uh, you know, unverified names and addresses and ICs and all kind of things, you know, I could go on and on and talk about all the discrepancies in our, in our election list, electoral list. And as we got to human rights, you know, this country, we hold a chair at the United Nations Human Rights Council. And we are proud to be a member of United Nations Human, human Rights Council. But do we really uphold human rights? I mean, we have an act known as this draconian internal security act that could imprison people without trials, right? Without fair trials. And we have seen that not only, you know, suspected uh, uh, probably uh, insurgents who are being detained under ISA, but also religious minorities like the Shiites, for example, who had lived alongside the Sunnis ever since the time of Ali, right? So it's, it's totally you know, ridiculous for us to have this kind of act. And when the Prime Minister said last year that they wanted to abolish ISA, it was being replaced by a worse act. <laughs> and now we even have Public Assembly Act, which was against the Constitution of Malaysia that allows peaceful assembly of its citizens. citizens. So now it's, you know, basically it's, um, I do not know what to say, but uh, 
what we say is actually we did not actually practice it. No, we say we are the best democracy, we are not. We say that we uphold human rights, we are not. So now is the time that we talk about um, things that happen on the ground rather than on theoretical aspects. And I think I open the floor first to uh, the Member of Parliament, uh, Nur Iza, to probably comment on, on this issue. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Farouk. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon. I think since the politician has spoken, I can go <laughs> straight to, to the topic. Um, you know, it's, it's a great honour to be here, of course, with Professor Tariq Ramadan. And uh, the last thing I, I read, which you wrote on the Egyptian revolution, because here a lot of Malaysians are, of course, very enamoured. Uh, people keep referring to the anecdotes uh, by Morsi and his son declaring the success and being very faithful to the struggle. So, of course, it's a certain sense of romanticism that comes from the, uh, the, the, the success uh, after the presidential elections. And I remember the sentence ended with, um, the revolution has yet to come. And today, I think you have successfully brought the revolution on Malaysian shores. That's why people are clapping. You must understand, Malaysians don't clap. <laughs> they don't. I'm a politician, you know. In public rallies, it's almost impossible to get anyone to clap for you. But today, you have effectively got, at last count, about 10 claps, you know, huge applause, until, of course, you, you, you stop them eh, in their tracks. So I, I think, um, you know, but going back to the issues mentioned and uh, the term which caught my attention was, of course, the umatic discourse. Because in Malaysia, you mentioned a, a, a whole list, the laundry list of what it takes to mature as a democracy. But the one I would like to pick on, because we are a multiracial, pluralistic nation. And uh, when you talk about multiculturalism, there's one quote I always use in my discourse because Sometimes in Malaysia or among Malaysians, we, we can't escape um, racial politics. Uh, of course, the government of the day are consisting of racially based parties. But I come from a, a multiracial, multireligious party, and it was such a struggle to create this ummatic discourse within the party. And I remember the point that it, it makes so much sense, but no one really mentions it, the point that should be noted. Multicultural society is a fact. There's no being for or against it. Um, the basic truth, this basic truth must be highlighted before engaging in the debate over multiculturalism, integration or citizenship. And that's what I think um, propelled us in the years after 1998, the reform movement that started first in Indonesia, affected Malaysia, uh, whether affected in a positive manner, I think it's positive. Some might not think so. But the party was created on the basis of um, multiculturalism. And it was such a challenge. Because you talk about theor theories. You talk about, yes, what you should do ideally in a pluralistic, uh, plural nation. But the implementation it is very challenging. Of course, I won't go into the basic challenges, the hindrances in terms of there's no separation of powers. There are laws that certainly infringe upon the rights of Malaysians. But just on the multicultural aspect, when we started out uh, the, to get the different leaders together and then at the same time to get support from the people at large because, again, the prevailing culture is so polarized uh, according to race. So I see this evolution of a nomadic discourse that was not very successful in the past, but somehow reached a peak of sorts in the uh, 2008 general elections. Because even in a coalition, uh, we have a coalition, it's called Pakatan Rakyat, uh, consisting of three opposition parties. Uh, and of course, it's never easy because there are ideological differences and uh, you have three rather disparate entities yet having to come together and um, 
that in the past experiences, especially after the 1999 and 2004 elections, what happened was, in, because we, we suffered in terms of uh, the Normale votes, because the Normales eventually saw, um, you know, past Islamic party as, as um, not in line with a more progressive view of Malaysia at the time, and also because there was so much use um, of a victimized mentality. So for me, uh, the fact that when we kept at it, tried to create a culture to support the, the practicing of an umatic discourse, that's how you, you succeed. And I believe uh, when you said you have this vision of multiracialism, but you need more Malaysians, not just politicians, but all various stakeholders to accept that, to accept multiracialism as a fact and try to support, not necessarily the party per se, but the conducive environment to allow it to thrive. So that's, that's my take. Thank you very much. Thank you, Isa.